YouTube, how's it going? Chris Cornaros here, the Cryptocurrent team, bringing you another episode of Crypto Decrypted. And today we are talking all about crypto ecosystems, what they are, different kinds, and why they are important. You don't want to miss this one. Crypto Decrypted. Now, before we dive into the meat and potatoes of today's episode, I do want to remind you all that if this is your first time visiting the channel, please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified whenever we have new content on the channel. And if you enjoyed today's video, of course, don't forget to leave a like and drop a comment telling me what you did enjoy. First up, let's answer the most basic question of all, and that is, what is a crypto ecosystem? Well, put simply, a crypto ecosystem is really just a blockchain network with various participants all working together because they have you know shared business values they share processes or maybe they just generally want to head in the same direction first up you have ethereum it was the first altcoin and also the second cryptocurrency which is why it is the first altcoin but we'll dive into that a little bit in another video ethereum is actually an ecosystem protocol and what that means is it was designed to kind of solve some of the challenges of decentralized cryptocurrencies, right? And projects. Ethereum was designed to be immutable, meaning that nobody can go in and change anything in the blockchain ledger. It's also secure. So it, you know, protects from outside interference or criminal activity. Next, you also have Stellar. Now, Stellar is another ecosystem protocol. First and foremost, Stellar is scalable and very high performing. They wanted to move beyond some of the issues that Ethereum had with you know gas and transactions kind of slowing everything down or making it very expensive to run quickly. And it's also open source and decentralized, which is not to say Ethereum isn't or other crypto ecosystems are not, but that is one of the key features of sellers that it is completely open source. And finally, and this is really where ecosystems start to become interesting, is seller actually supports multiple currencies. So if you want to you know, perform a transaction or interact with an application built on the Stellar protocol, you're actually able to do it in whichever currency you want to do. Because within the Stellar protocol, there's an automatic Forex process. If you're using a currency that, you know, is different from the native Stellar token, the protocol will automatically go through the process of exchanging it into what you need. So I think that's really interesting and cool, just to give you an idea of how some of these ecosystems work. And the last example I want to give to you guys is going to be Tezos, which is another ecosystem protocol in crypto. And some of the key kind of attributes of Tezos are that it's self-amending, which means you don't need hard forks. Quick little note on that. A hard fork is when essentially a protocol will split into two. Part of the governance, so part of the people involved, want to take it in a different direction or make such a big upgrade that it essentially you're fundamentally splitting it because the new protocol is so different. You know, essentially with this self-amending process, you never need to do hard forks because any of the upgrades you want to add just come right to the ecosystem. Another key attribute of Tezos is that it supports smart contracts. And for those who don't know, I did a video about it a while back on the channel. You can go check that out. And finally, Tezos is on-chain governance. And what that means is that if you are participating on chain in Tezos, you are also part of the governance of it. You get to help decide any changes or things that should continue with the protocol. Now, we've broken down what a crypto ecosystem is. I give you a few examples of how they work and kind of the goals they're trying to achieve. But you may be wondering, why does any of this matter? So essentially by capitalizing on the value you get from collaborating, all the participants collaborating are going to be able to share not just value, but also knowledge, right? When you share that same underlying blockchain protocol, you're actually sharing a lot of information, but also value. As the underlying protocol increases in value, a lot of times so do the apps built on top of it and vice versa. If an app does well, so does the underlying protocol and the other apps connected with it. There are also certain ecosystem models that work better than others for different cases. And that's the beauty of ecosystems is if you have a clear goal in mind and you build an ecosystem protocol to achieve that specific goal, it can be incredibly powerful just because you're working towards something very specific. But that's gonna wrap things up today, guys. Before I go, I do just wanna run back through everything in case you forgot. So. So a crypto ecosystem is essentially a network of participants all existing on top of the same blockchain protocol. 
it really depends on the ecosystem, how they work. But at the end of the day, all ecosystems are really seeking to provide the same thing, which is scalability and interoperability. And finally, this is really important and all ecosystems in crypto are because through collaboration, it really helps all the participants become more than just the sum of their parts. But that's gonna do it for me today, guys. I hope you guys found this video entertaining, exciting, educational. And if you did, don't forget to drop a like on the video and let me know down in the comments below what you enjoyed or maybe what you didn't enjoy or even if you have any more questions. But until next Thursday, guys, I'm Chris Cornaros with the Cryptocurrent team.